Kent, great to see you. Can you explain just how this election works? It uh, isn't as simple as just having all Inuit vote on the candidates. No, it sure isn't that simple, Dennis. Now, what happens is any Inuk 18 or over can put their name forward to be ITK president, but only 12 people actually get to vote on who wins. See, Canada has four regional Inuit associations. Each of them has an elected president. Each organization gets one vote for their president and then two more delegates to come along for a total of 12 delegates. So it's not a popular vote. It's a selection process that's being held by leaders who have won a popular vote. The only thing you could really compare ITK to in Canada would be AFN. In AFN's case, it's only the chiefs that vote for the national leader. In ITK's case, it is the leaders of the land claims organizations and a few select others. And Kent, so who are the candidates this time around? Well, there are three candidates this time, Dennis. Uh, the incumbent, Nathan Obed, former federal MP Peter Itanoir, and former bureaucrat and current student Peter Williamson. Now, Obed was first chosen for this job back in 2015. He's just finished his first term. What are some of the issues that will be in the uh, minds of those few voters tomorrow? Well, the thing that always comes up with Nathan Obed is a nuptitut. Uh, he's not fluent. He speaks usually in English. Mm -hmm. Now, back in 2015 when he ran, he was grilled by the collective Inuit leadership over how he planned to communicate with Inuit without using a nuptitut. Now, this time out, Obed has his own record to run on. Uh, he's a highly educated guy. He has a ton of experience working for the organizations that are doing the actual voting. Mm -hmm. And he's federally been pushing for the elimination of tuberculosis. Now, the thing that Canadians might recognize him most for well, is for his efforts to have the Edmonton CFL team change their name. Now, Itanoir, he's pushing his own Inuktitut fluency as an advantage. He, he's saying his campaign is about communication, and communication he feels would work better for Inuit in Inuktitut. Uh, Williamson, he's the least experienced of the three politically, but his platform comes from his experience working for organizations like ITK. Uh, he wants to see less of a separation between ITK's policies and their programming. He sees the two as disconnected right now. Kent, any predictions for yourself for tomorrow's election? Uh, well, so much of the campaigning happens in private due to the nature of this election. It's hard to know exactly what's going to happen, but there are a few things you should be keeping in mind. Obed hasn't had any unforced errors. He hasn't made any major mistakes or scandals. And while he is originally from Labrador, he spent a good part of his professional life living here in Iqaluit. So he has grassroots support from two of the different regions that get to choose electors for this election. Now, Itanoir last won an election in 1979. Uh, he lost in 1984 and was just crushed in 2008, uh, running federally. He only got 8% of the vote running here in Nunavut. Now, uh, Williamson, he just isn't that well known. So it would be a surprise if anybody but Obed won. But with elections, isn't that the best part? The surprises, you never really know what's going to happen. Uh, regardless, your, the safe money is on Nathan Obed. Well, we'll be watching. Kent, good to see you as always. Appreciate you bringing us up to speed on this. Quite a week, Dennis.